Here's everything you might have missed in the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power trailer. Looks like Lord of the Rings back on the menu, boys. <clears throat> Excuse me. After teasing out enough character posters to fill an entire extended edition, Prime Video finally released the very first look at Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power during the big game. And that's what we have to call it for legal reasons. And although this debuted during the Superb Owl, there was nary a deus ex machina eagle in sight. Reportedly the most expensive TV show in human history, Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power takes place thousands and thousands of years before the events of The Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings trilogy. It's something the trailer made abundantly clear through on-screen text as we saw mysterious glimpses into what lies ahead when the series debuts at long last on Friday, September 2nd. Now, with that said, the Rings of Power first look trailer teased some familiar faces, offered up some sweeping vistas, and gave us plenty of clues about what to expect from this highly anticipated return to Middle Earth. Now, we're gonna break down everything you need to know and everything that you might have missed in this trailer in just a moment, but if you prefer to go into the show knowing less about the Second Age than Gollum knows about taters, well, leave now before it's too late. What? Potatoes. Potatoes. All right, let's get into it, shall we? Now, in case you've delved too greedily and too deep and you've been living under a rock, here's the official synopsis for The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Prime Video's The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power brings to screens for the very first time the heroic legends of the fabled Second Age of Middle-earth's history. This epic drama is set thousands of years before the events of J.R.R. Tolkien's The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings books, and will take viewers back to an era in which great powers were forged, kingdoms rose to glory and fell to ruin, unlikely heroes were tested, hope hung by the finest of threads, and one of the greatest villains that ever flowed from Tolkien's pen threatened to cover all the world in darkness. Beginning in a time of relative peace, the series follows an ensemble cast of characters both familiar and new as they confront the long-feared re-emergence of evil to Middle-earth. From the darkest depths of the Misty Mountains, to the majestic forests of the elf capital of Linden, to the breathtaking island kingdom of Numenor, to the farthest reaches of the map, these kingdoms and characters will carve out legacies that live on long after they are gone. Speaking of Numenor, it's basically Middle-earth's version of Atlantis, and that's exactly where we begin this trailer. As you can see, this takes place long before Sauron corrupts this kingdom of men and their rulers, and it eventually sinks into the sea. That massive statue we see in the front, which evokes the Argonath statues of Anarion and Isildur in Fellowship of the Rings, is most likely of Elros, the half-elven first king of Numenor, and the brother of Elrond, who we'll also see later in this trailer. And while we're seeing an idyllic version of Numenor right now, what lies ahead is nothing but darkness and destruction which will play out over the show's projected five seasons. As we mentioned in previous breakdowns, Sauron ultimately brings this great nation of men to ruin. For example, when King Arpharazon brings a captured Sauron to Numenor, this future poster boy for Clear Eyes winds up corrupting the Numenorean people and makes them worship the Dark Lord Morgoth by promising them eternal life. And then before you know it, like an Instagram DM from Becky, your friend from high school, is trying to get you to join her MLM, suddenly there's a 500 foot tall temple to Morgoth where human sacrifice happens on the regular. Then the Numenorians try to invade the Undying Lands to attack the godlike Valar, and ultimately the creator himself, Eru Iluvatar, sent the entire island to a watery grave. So basically, this is what happens when you try to attack and dethrone God and you're not in a JRPG. Don't do it. Now, next up, we see what Vanity Fair described as a pair of nomadic hunters in their first look images of the series. These two are shown walking across a mountainous field carrying massive antlers strapped to their backs. While some have speculated these are meant to replicate wings to potentially attract a larger animal they're hunting, I think it's far likelier they've killed some massive elk and they're carrying those antlers back to their camp. Or who knows, maybe they're normal sized antlers and these are small people like hobbits. During the first two shots, we hear a young woman's voice saying, have you ever wondered what else is out there? There's wonders in this world beyond our wandering. I can feel it. This culminates with a shot of Markella Kavanaugh's mystery character. And if she looks a little bit Hobbit-esque here, that's not a mistake. She's actually a Harfoot, one of the ancestors to the Hobbits that we know and love today in the Peter Jackson films and Tolkien's books. Now, according to the Atlas of Middle-earth, Harfoots are one of three distinct races of Hobbits, including Stores and Fallowhides as well. Kavanaugh's character, alongside another Harfoot played by Megan Richards, are part of what Vanity Fair describes as a pastoral Harfoot society that thrives on secrecy and evading detection. And later in the trailer, we see a fireball streaking across the night sky. After that, one of the Harfoots, a girl named Nori, comes across a man emerging from a fiery, smoldering crater. Most likely, this sequence ties into what the showrunners teased as two lovable, curious Harfoots who encounter a mysterious lost man whose origin promises to be one of the show's most enticing enigmas. 
Played by Daniel Wayman, this mystery man is the subject of numerous fan theories already. They run the gamut from Tom Bombadil, to a nude Sauron, to Celebrimbor himself. And of those three, I have to say Sauron feels like the likeliest option here, because our working theory is that this could be one of the Maiar, the predecessors to wizards like Saruman, Gandalf, and Radagast, who appeared during the Third Age of Middle-earth. These spirits were created to help the Valar shape the world, and they could actually walk among the people of Middle-earth. And yes, Sauron was a Maiar originally as well before he got promoted to Dark Lord, or assistant to the regional Dark Lord if you're being technical here. Now if this is in fact Sauron, maybe this is the form he disguised himself in after Morgoth's defeat. Because after that happened, he remained dormant and gathered the power and resources needed to amass forces in Mordor, and forged the One Ring while the titular Rings of Power were also being forged. And if that's the case, this would add a nice parallel to the Lord of the Rings saga. Two Harfoots help him regain his footing on Middle-earth unknowingly, and two hobbits help vanquish him centuries later. It's like poetry. No, wrong guy. Next, we see Morfid Clark as Galadriel long before she was a queen and eventually diminished into the West. Here, she's much more of a badass warrior type leading the Northern armies to exterminate the remnants of the Dark Lord Morgoth's forces. In this particular shot, we see her using a dagger to scale a frozen waterfall high up in some snow-covered mountains. Given that we see other cloaked figures below Galadriel, this could depict the crossing of the Hell Caraxi, the icy waste between Valinor and Middle-earth. Galadriel's uncle, Fingolfin, led a host of elves over this treacherous crossing previously, and that could be what we're seeing happen here as well. With that said, this could also be taking place somewhere in the Northern Waste, also known as the Farad Waste, but why she's free soloing this waterfall still remains to be seen. On her shoulders, you can see a sigil that at first resembles the Star of Feanor. However, it's more likely a symbol of the House of Finarfin, indicating that Galadriel is in the service of Gil-galad in the Elven Kingdom in Linden. But Galadriel's journey is going to be a lot more difficult than determining ancient heraldic symbols. Case in point, in the next shot, we see a man clinging to the ruins of a raft on stormy seas. This is Hallbrand, a Hallbrand new human character created for this show, who we know very little about. According to the Vanity Fair article, he's going to be shipwrecked alongside Galadriel. Later in the trailer, we see Hallbrand checking Galadriel's ears to reveal that she is, in fact, an elf. Described as a fugitive from his own past, this character, played by Charlie Vickers, is one of the biggest question marks in the show for the time being. Moving on, we come to the Rings of Power's answer to Legolas, Arendir, a sylvan elf played by Ismail Cruz Cordova, who looks to be our resident badass with a bow. Case in point, he catches an arrow mid-air before it hits the guy on the ground next to him. Takes some serious reflexes. According to Vanity Fair, he reportedly helps keep the peace in the Southland, inhabited mainly by mortals, and he's involved in a doomed romance with a human healer in a nearby village named Bronwyn, which coincidentally is what my dad wanted to name me had I been born a girl. But we know that Arendir isn't limited to using a bow and arrow based on another scene of him launching a flying axe attack later in the trailer as well. More curious, though, is the chain around his ankle, leading us to wonder how he was imprisoned and who exactly he's striking in this scene with such ferocity. Moving on, we see a golden-clad elven man looking up towards the night sky, and this is Benjamin Walker as the high elven king Gil-galad, who we saw previously portrayed by Mark Ferguson in the Lord of the Rings films. One of the most important people of the Second Age, Gil-galad, established Linden, the elven seat of power, where he ruled over it as king. And he's perhaps best known for helping lead the Alliance of Elves and Men in the battle against the Dark Lord Sauron, which unfolds in the prologue of the Fellowship of the Rings. It was a conflict that ultimately cost him his life, but led to Sauron's temporary downfall. Here we see him standing by a pool of water with yellowish leaves or flower petals on the ground, and this is likely taking place in Linden. In an aerial shot later in the trailer, we see that Linden is full of yellow trees, and there's a little pool there, a waterfall, and even a basin similar to the one that Galadriel had in the Peter Jackson films. At this point in time, the future is theoretically looking pretty good for the elves, and for Linden more specifically. Although, with that said, Gilgalad's likely gonna have to deal with people like Galadriel, who rightly believe that evil still lurks around every corner, so he's gonna have his fair share of headaches. After that, we see Galadriel on horseback leading mounted warriors across a plain. And this is probably another shot of her chasing down remnants of Morgoth and Sauron's forces. After that, we see another elf played by Kip Chapman in what appears to be an underground passage. Here, he comes face to face with a monster that looks like a prototypical version of the trolls that menaced our heroes in Moria in Fellowship of the Rings. <laughs> And speaking of Moria, we know that the politically ambitious young Elrond, played here by Robert Aramayo, is chosen to journey to Moria back when it was better known as Casa Doom to broker a peace between the dwarves and the elves. Now, perhaps this could be part of Elrond's entourage facing this troll? Either way, it doesn't bode well for Chapman's character, to say the least. 
Next up, we see the heir to the throne of Casa Doom, Prince Durin IV, son of King Durin III. And although we mostly know Moria as a necropolis full of corpses, creatures, and collapsing staircases, here we see the subterranean kingdom in all of its glory. We see a dwarven princess named Disa singing during some sort of mysterious ceremony, which based on Elrond resting on a rock and Prince Durin cleaving one asunder later in the trailer, appears to be a contest of strength between these two characters. While Casa Doom's Casa Doom didn't come around until the time of Durin the Sixth, the series itself is likely going to be condensing timelines, so theoretically, we could expect to see a Balrog in this show after those dwarves delve too greedily and too deep in maybe like season four or five. Now, taking a step back, according to Vanity Fair, singing is actually how the dwarves commune with the mountain they live beneath as reverberations tell them where to dig. So who knows, maybe the Balrog would have preferred a stirring rendition of Far Over the Misty Mountains Cold instead. Anyway, speaking of the Balrog, we might actually see one in the corner during one of the final shots of this trailer. In what's likely a flashback to a battle between the elves and Morgoth's orc army, we see Galadriel's brother Finrod, played by Will Fletcher, shouting at his enemies. This could be the Dagger Bragalach, the Battle of the Sudden Flame, which took place during the First Age between Morgoth's armies and an alliance of elves and men. Speaking of Finrod, he's later captured by Sauron, who imprisoned him and his allies in a dungeon and then sent a werewolf to kill them, which, obviously, the only way to kill someone in a dungeon, that's what I think of first. Anyway, Finrod sacrificed himself to kill the werewolf, earning himself a noble death. With that said, perhaps finding out what exactly happened to her brother could be what's driving Galadriel's rage here. And last but not least, the trailer itself ends with a large hand clasping a much smaller one. It's unclear who these two people are, but our best guess for the time being is that it's the mystery man from the comet and one of the Harfoot girls. But for now, we'll just have to wait and see until Amazon releases more footage from the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. And with that said, we'll have plenty of other deep dives into Middle Earth just waiting for you over on Nerdist.com as we count down the days until September 2nd. In the meantime though, let us know, is there anything in the trailer that we missed? And what did you think of the first look at the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. It's quite cool. Let us know in the comments below, and for the latest and greatest in the world of pop culture, make sure you stay tuned to Nerdist.com.